Hey everybody, it's Edie and welcome to Mixed Mediology. I have the cutest, coolest little project for you today. My friend Deborah Buckland posted a video where she was talking about domino books and I instantly became obsessed. So I did some research and started looking up different projects with domino books and I have been making them for the last couple of days and a lot of people were talking about it. We had a discussion on my Facebook page and people wanted to know more about the domino books so I said that I would do a video and show you how to make your own domino book. Now I do have dominoes. My first domino book was made with actual dominoes but uh, my dominoes these are kind of an awkward size. They're like seven eighths by one and nine sixteenths or some crazy measurement like that. And uh, I mean, it's fine. It doesn't matter how big they are, but they're just a little bit um, smaller than average dominoes. I guess an average domino is like one inch by two inches or something like that. So uh, I went in search of larger dominoes. I mean, this is fine. If this is the only dominoes you have, it's fine. You can make these domino books out of any game with the little flat panels like this. But on my excursion to the thrift store this week, I actually found a Rummy Cube game. And this is what I found at uh, my thrift store. So you, you see me have this in Thrift Shop Thursday this week. Um, but it's actually not what the Mixed Mediology Monday project is on. is because I found, I went to another thrift store and found something a little bit different. And I'm going to try to make a domino book with that. So you'll see what that is on Thrift Shop Thursday in a couple of days. So I have this Rummy Cube game, and this is what the Rummy Cube tiles look like. So I don't know why that one's got the dot in it. They don't have the dot. So they have that little circle, that little indented circle right there, and then the number on it, and then the back side is flat and smooth, just like a regular domino. And these, again, are a little bit smaller than regular dominoes. These are one inch by one and a half inches. Um, so they're still a little smaller than regular dominoes, but like I said, it, it doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter what size your game pieces are. And I show you how to measure your book and make any size book, no matter what game piece you're using. So uh, here is my very first domino book. <laughs> if you follow me on Facebook, <laughs> you know that whenever I made this, this is the front cover, and so it opens like this. Well, whenever I was making this book, the quote says, everybody is a genius, but I somehow managed to put the title on the back cover, and it's upside down. <laughs> so, uh, that was my first experience with a domino book. So I hope to try and help you avoid some of my catastrophes in the making of your own domino books. And actually someone liked this so much they wanted it, so I'm going to send it to them. This is my second domino book here, and I really, really like this one. I had some old stamps that I, I just have never used. So I used my old stamps in this book. I guess I could show you the first one too, huh? And that's the back. I like to leave the backs of mine pretty plain because uh, I feel like you're not really looking at it. I like it to be decorated so that it's not completely plain, but that's not where I've been putting all of my embellishments. I've been putting the embellishments only on the front, but I want to make one where I do something on the front and the back. So this is the first one. It says, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And the reason I did that quote is because whenever I cut my scrapbook paper, it had the fish on it. And that Albert Einstein quote just popped into my head. So I did some collage of a tree and collage the words and embossed the fish a little bit. And this one's made with just double-sided scrapbook paper. I wrote, I did some journaling here on the back. Uh, and then this one is done with regular watercolor paper. And then I use gel medium to glue on sheet music. And this one's got beeswax on it, too. I don't know if you can see, but see how that sheen is on there? I used beeswax on this little domino book right here. And then I also embedded some stars 
with Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. But I talk more about this. I, I'll, I'll show you in the video. Um, I'll talk more about these, about how they're made and, and what I used on them. So that's it. So thanks, Deborah, for the great idea on the Domino books. There is all kinds of information out there on Domino books. So if you Google it or go to my favorite place, Pinterest, you can find all kinds of inspiration on different ways to create closures for your books and just ideas on the different things that you can do with these books. My next, I, my next project is going to be to learn to either work a Dremel or my drill because I want to drill holes. In these and make different things with them but like, you gotta have holes in them to make stuff <laughs> so uh, I just want to show you now the basic how to create one of these domino books but this technique can be used on any little game piece that's that's that can be used for a cover so come on down to my studio and I'll show you how to make them okay let's talk about making these domino books now what I'm going to show you is the basics of how to construct the book and then I will put the making of my book in high speed. So the steps that you'll follow here will work for dominoes, it'll work for rummy cube pieces which is what I have here, um, it'll work for pretty much any little game piece that you have, any of these little flat tile type of game pieces. So let me show you a couple of the books that I've done. This one is done with the black dominoes. And this is the first one that I did. This is the one that if you follow me on Facebook, um, I did the cover backwards and upside down. And the, the quote says, everybody is a genius. Everybody but me, it seems, because I glued the front cover of my book. I glued the quote to the back cover and it was upside down. So that's why it's on here twice. So what I did was I glued in my scrapbook paper. This has got collage, it's got embossing, it's got uh, stickles around the outside edge, and then quote here on the front, more scrapbook paper, and then I glued in some bling with Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, and this is the one with the gold flake in it. And then because I had messed up and I forgot also to, to put my closure in there, I had to glue that on the outside. So it's glued to the outside and I used a skinny string so that you could still see the quote here. And it just wraps right around and ties here on the side. The second one that I did, which I actually really love, is done with the Rummy Cube tiles. And this one has got, well, let me make sure it's right side up. <laughs> uh, this one has got acrylic ink and then I embedded three little gold stars here and again completely filled it with the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic with the gold fleck in it and this is what the front cover did look like before the gold fleck so this is acrylic ink on the front and back covers and then some sharpie around the edge and then I took some sheet music and glued it on to regular white watercolor paper I did some spritzing here on the back and some stamping and then glued the sheet music to the front side of it. I had some old stamps and so I alternated some colors of those and then completely covered the entire thing in beeswax so it smells really good and uh, I love the way that looks. Then for the closure, uh, I've only glued it to one side and I'll show you how to do the closure at the end of the, the video on, on how to make the book. But I only put the closure on one side and then it actually wraps around the book and comes back to tie right here. So there are several ways that you can do the closures. The insides of the book, pretty much anything goes. As long as it's flat, it'll work. Like you can, you can collage, you can stamp, you can ink, you can spray, you can stencil, you know, beeswax. All of that stuff works on the inside. You just want to make sure you don't have a lot of bulky stuff in there because otherwise your book will be like this. It won't close all the way. So this is the one that I'm getting ready to show you on the video and I'll just do this in high speed. Um, I'm not going to really talk through it. I'll just, I'll do the making of in high speed so you can see one being made. But this is the one that I, I'm getting ready to show you how to make. So what I did was, well I'm not even going to tell you, I'll just let you watch the video. <laughs> but um, this one has got a closure that I'm getting ready to show you how to do, but mine's got an actual chain for the closure, so one side stays 
really tight and the other side is a little bit looser. Um, it just worked out better for me that way so that I can actually get in there and, and open it up. I'm not going to show you the inside. I'm going to wait and show you at the end what this one looks like on the inside. Um, so that's the one that I'm getting ready to make. But the concept for all of these is exactly the same. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So there is a mathematical, highly scientific way to figure out exactly how long your paper should be. And you would just figure out the width of your domino and then multiply it by how many folds you want. And then you need an additional two because of the gluing. And then you, yeah, multiply all that. It's, and it can be a bit of a pain. So here's what I'm going to tell you to do. You need to measure your domino because you need to know how big it is. And for example, I'll be using these rummy cube die, uh, rummy cube tiles. So these rummy cube tiles are one inch by one and a half. You need to know how big it is because that does come into play. But as far as cutting your paper, don't stress yourself out about how to make sure it's the right length. You can always trim your paper if you need to. It's better to cut your paper a little bit long and then trim it later than to stress yourself out about all that. So here's what you're going to do. You need to measure how you want your book cover to be. So my book cover is going to run like this. This will be the front of my cover and this will be the side of the spine. So I need to know that my domino is an inch and a half long. Now because my domino is an inch and a half long, what I want to do is come one notch back on the ruler. So my domino ends right here. I'm going to come one notch shorter than that. And that's where I'm actually going to make my marks to cut. Because that's going to give me just a little bit of a border that's going to guarantee that my paper doesn't hang off the sides of my domino. And um, it's just, it's just going to fit a lot better. So I'm going to mark out my paper here. I'm going to find my one and a half inch mark. And come back that extra little dot. That's like a nine sixteenths or something on the ruler. I, I don't even know what it's called. It's one dot. <laughs> okay, so now you want to take and I just use the entire length of my paper. However long it is, that's how long I cut it because you can always go back and trim it later. And you just want to cut that off. Okay, so I have my strip of paper cut out. And it is just a tiny bit smaller. It's the tiniest bit smaller than the width of my domino. Now here's where the, or excuse me, than the length of my domino. Here's where the width of your domino comes into play. You need to know how wide it is. And my domino is, I have two rulers here for a reason. <laughs> You'll see why in just a second. So my domino is one inch wide. And now what I want to do is mark out one inch, one inch intervals here on my book strip. Okay. So I have all of my little notches marked. Now, I don't own a bone folder. I don't have a scoring card or whatever they're called. I just use my metal ruler. You can use the back of your scissors, whatever you have that works for you. I have two rulers. So what I do is I find all of my little notches. I line up one ruler and I use the other ruler to go through and score. You want to score your paper because that's just going to make folding a whole lot easier. It makes your folds even. Well, it helps to make them more even. <laughs> they aren't exactly even all the time, but I'm going to show you how to fix that too. I'm 
you just want to go through and score all of your notches. Okay, so I have all of my marks scored. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but they are. And now you just want to do your accordion fold. Now, you have it scored, but it still might not be perfect. This is going to be the time to fix it. So if you notice that your folds are not perfect, before you pinch them down and, and secure them, this is where you want to fix it. So take your time on your accordion fold. Make sure it's nice and even before you make your creases tight. Okay, so I have my accordion fold all done, and I'm just going to give it a good crease. So, you have your accordion fold done. Now, this is the time you want to decide how long you want your book to be. So, what you can do is just kind of hold your tiles on whoops, and stretch it out and see how long it is, if it's too long, if it's the right length. And you also, at this point, need to decide how you want your book to lay and how you want it to close. So, if your accordion, like mine here, both of them go up, uh, then, then your book is going to lay flat. If you have one going up and one going down, for example, if this is how my, whoops, let's just fold that in. If this is how my accordion looked, so one is going, oh shit, no, I did it backwards still. Damn it. There we go. If one is going up and the other is going down, then it's going to lay crooked in your book. Your book is not going to, I mean, it'll still lay flat, but it'll, you just need to decide if you want your book to lay like that or not. So play with this here. Before you start embellishing your book, make sure it's the right length. Make sure it's going to open and close the way you want it to. Make sure the flaps are going to stop where you want them to. Uh, and this is the time to adjust the length of your book. So, Like if you wanted to write a word in here, and just for example, if the word only had five letters, and you wanted to skip a space, so you would need, you would need a space here for your book cover. And if you wanted your word to start on the next page, you would need one space, two space, three space, four space, five. And then you would need to decide if you wanted your book cover to close here or here. Okay? So this is the time to play with your inner cover, I mean, excuse me, your inner book and decide if it's the size you want it to be. Now, as far as the embellishments go, pretty much anything goes. Like I said, if it's flat, you can put it in here. It doesn't have to be um, completely flat, but you just don't want a lot of bulky items in here. So once you've got your book completely embellished, you want to make sure your book and your cover are completely embellished. Once they're done and dry is when you actually build your book. At least that's, that's the way I've built my book. It just, it leaves a lot less room for error and you have a lot less chance of actually messing up your book. So you want to make sure that your cover is completely decorated and that your inner book is completely decorated and that it's all dry before you start to actually build your book. Once your covers and your inner book are completely done and you're ready to embellish your book, there are a few different ways that you can create the closures. You can do hinges. Now, if you do the hinge, you would, you know, you would attach your hinge here and then your book is going to just open like a regular little book. So the accordion is going to kind of go away on your book. So if you had a hinge on it, 
it would open like this and you could flip the pages but it would not extend out like that so that's something to keep in mind if you if you wanted to do hinges or not um, you could have the closure like I did on this book where it's glued on one side and then wraps around. You could have a closure where it's glued on the outside and wraps around. But one of the easiest closures you can do is the one that I'm going to show you right here. It's actually a closure on both sides of your book so that it keeps it compressed on both sides. So what you want to do is take some string or ribbon or lace or whatever it is that you're using and you want to cut two lengths of it. So now remember, my book, this would be the outside for my front and back cover and it's completely embellished, it's completely dry and basically done. It just needs to be glued together. So this is going to be the inside where you're gluing your book in okay now what you want to do is take your two lengths of lace string ribbon whatever it is that you're using and you want to cover your entire domino with whatever glue you're using I'm just using Aileen's clear tacky glue so you want to completely cover your domino because you are gluing your book in at this point. You lay your string on, make sure it's even, and you want it to stick out on both sides. So it comes straight across the center of your domino like that. And I like to add just, oops, a little bit more glue right here in the center because this is where your book is going to stick. And now you want to glue your book down. Now you want to make sure your cover is right side up. So this would be my back cover and it would be laying just like it should be. And you want to press your book cover down. And you want to kind of press around your closure string, your ribbon or whatever it is that you're using. You want to press around that and make sure your paper is sticking to the domino because that, that's going to lift your paper up a little bit. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult for the paper to stick. You want to make sure your paper is straight. Again, at this point you would have already made sure which way you want your book to lay, which way you want it to open, and you would glue it in on the last the last um, fold here of your accordion. Okay? So that's the back cover of the book. Now this is the front cover. So you're going to do exactly the same thing. Remember this is the front cover all embellished and dry. You're going to completely cover it tacky glue. You're going to lay your string. Make sure it's centered. Add a tiny bit more glue right here. Okay. Now, what I suggest is closing your book up and taking your tile and laying it in place just as it's supposed to be. That way you ensure that it's right side up and then you can always just open it back up a little bit to work on it. Make sure your paper's straight, press it down around your ribbon or yarn or whatever you're using. Wipe off any excess glue, press it down really, really well. Now, if your cover is crooked, this is the time you're going to need to fix it. So you want to close your book back up and make sure it's all lined up and even. And you can adjust as you need to right now. Otherwise, it's going to be crooked. So this is the time to fix it if it's crooked. I like to give it a good press. 
and then you want to open it back up make sure that none of the pages are stuck to that last piece you just glued in and then let this dry for several hours because you want to make sure that your pages aren't going to stick So that's how my opened book will look. And then when you close it, this would be my front cover. Let me write F on there. And this would be my back cover. Whoops. And then in order to close it, you'll just tie the two sides together. My fingers are all sticky now from the glue. And you can just do a single knot, you can do a bow, you can do whatever you want to do here. There we go. And this will keep your book nice and tight. Closed up nice and tightly. And there you have it. That's how you make your domino books. Now, I'm going to show you the fast forward of me making my latest book, which is the Steampunk, Steampunk book. And like I was telling you, my closure on that one is a little bit funky, and I actually had to redo it like three different times because my original idea didn't work. So I ended up making this same basic closure but with chain. And you, you see how I do that in the video. But this is the... This is the steampunk book, and that's the closure on it. So it's chain on both sides, but I did it exactly the same way. I laid my domino out, glued my chain across, and glued my paper down on top of it. Um, it doesn't keep my book closed very tightly, but it does keep it closed. And there you go. And there you go. There's the domino book. So you can see here's the front cover. And it opens out like that, and then the back cover. So you can see how I've got the closure on both sides so that I can tie it together. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I'm totally addicted to these things. <laughs> like, I need, I have a Pinterest board for my craft inspiration, and I've got a lot of domino stuff happening on there. I might need to create its own board they might need their own board because I'm totally addicted to these little books now. I'm having so much fun with them and like anything is possible. You can, you can do so much. It, it, I'm, I'm so excited about these. I'm totally making ornaments with these and, and sharing them with people and maybe we'll do a swap if enough people are interested in them. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So if you have any questions, remember, just leave it in the comment section below and I will answer it as soon as possible. If you like what I do here, click that little subscribe button and that way you don't miss anything. And then you can also click the share button and tell all your friends about it. So don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram. I'm all over the place. If you go find me in those places and follow me, then I will follow you back. Thanks so much for being here with me today. I would love to see your creations. So if you make some domino books, be sure to tag me either on Twitter or Facebook or somewhere so that I can come check out what you have made. And I'll be back in just a couple of days with Thrift Shop Thursday where you see what I found at the thrift store and you'll see what I plan to make with it on next week's Mixed Mediology Monday. I'm so happy to be back. I'm so inspired again. I've got so many ideas and different things that I want to make. So I look forward to seeing you again on Thrift Shop Thursday and then again on Mixed Mediology Monday. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye!